Welcome all gathered here. Welcome everyone online. This song is all about walking, talking, and living like our sins are completely gone. If you believe that, let's sing that today together. Come on. Let's sing it wasn't for nothing. It wasn't for nothing that you shed your blood. If you know it, sing it. Come on. So I'm going to live like my shame is gone. Won't be shackled to the way I was. Oh, I'm going to live like my chains are gone. Gone. Let's sing it. Now my sin is dead and gone. And I sing hallelujah. Let's sing done in his name. It's done. 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 He is risen. It is done. And I sing hallelujah. Yeah, we sing hallelujah. Praise is a weapon that will overcome. I'm gonna shout like the battle's won. Oh, fall back, devil, cause your time is up. And I'm gonna live same today. I'm gonna live like the stone is gone. Gone. And now my sin is dead and gone. And I sing hallelujah. We sing done today. Raise your voice, say, come on. Done, done, he is. He is risen in his And I sing hallelujah. Let's sing about his power. How great the power of the blood. Oh, oh, oh. oh. of God. Yes, we are. Oh, 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 how great, how great the power of the blood. Oh, 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 I am the righteousness. I am the righteousness of God. Oh, be praised for this. Done, done. He is risen, it is done, and I sing hallelujah. Oh, gone, gone. Now my sin is dead and gone, and I sing hallelujah. Oh, it's done. Oh, done, done. Hallelujah. It's done in his name. And we praise him for that, don't we? Come on. Come on, celebrate today. Come on. So we're going to sing a new song today. Inspired by the psalmist's question, who is like you, Lord God Almighty? So ask yourself that question today. Lord God, who is like you in all the earth? So can we sing that today together? Come on. Let's sing, you're seated on the throne. You're seated on the throne. Oh, let's sing that again. I jumped in early. You're seated on the throne of mercy. Your glory kind and bright for all to see. Let's sing, oh God. Oh God, I will praise you. Sing magnificent. Magnificent with praise, sun ending. You rescue us with love that never fails. Oh God. Oh God, I will praise you. This is when we sing it out. Who is like him? Who is like the Lord? 
strong in battle who is like the lord mighty to save who is like the lord king forever to raise jesus reigns jesus reigns oh let's sing i know i know that
who is like you in all the earth. Lord, with whatever the world offers and whatever the world bows down to, we say there's no one like our God. There's no one like you in all the earth. Who is like you? You're seated on your throne in all your glory and all your honor, Lord. So we say here today in this building, in this church, and in our homes, we say, who is like you, Lord? No one. No one. Lord, we say all of this in your name. Amen. Amen. Church, why don't we be seated today? Good afternoon. Welcome to the bridge. Welcome to those that are here, (laughs) those that are online. I'm Pastor Emily, the pastor of discipleship. My name is Jeff. I'm the pastor of creative arts here at the bridge. And thank you, Pastor Darius and the worship team. I know that uh, sometimes it's, uh, um, yeah, we consider the new songs that we introduced to our church. And I know he and his uh, lead team were in (laughs) prayer over the last one. And what an anthem for us this morning. Amen. 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 What a great new song. Thank you, Pastor Darius. Mm -hmm. If you're new to the bridge, we would love to welcome you. If you're uh, looking to get connected, whether you're here in person or online, we have an opportunity for you to do so. If you're here in person after service, you can head out to our atrium. And right at the back as you exit, you'll see two big banners that say Connection Center. And there's going to be someone there. Greg is there. Uh, He will meet you and greet you in a contactless way. And if you're online, the host will put in a link in the chat that you can click on or you can go to bridgeconnect.ca fill out the form and we will be in touch with you fantastic another shout out if you're joining us online feel free to snap a video or take a picture put it on uh, socials and tag us at the bridge last week we had a great uh, we had a life group that had a, a watch party in their backyard it's always great to see that we'll be sure to reshare that and say hi to you guys and hear your stories as you watch us Online, And I know last week we had a fantastic service with uh, Compassion Canada uh, out in our atrium with Will Walker leading worship um, as we talked about missions here at the bridge. And praise God, last week we had 16 children who were not sponsored become sponsored. Give yourselves a hand. That is fantastic. Um, Just in talking with Amy Esperaz from from Compassion Canada, she was overwhelmed uh, with your generosity church. And I know that there were some other ones that were uh, sponsored online as well. So you'll notice on the screen uh, that there is a link that's going to be live for probably another three, maybe three and a half weeks, um, just dedicated to us here at The Bridge, compassion.ca slash The Bridge Markham. So if God was working on your heart last week, maybe um, you took some time praying through the week and sponsorship of a child or children, many others, was something that you'd like to get involved with. Uh, you guys can always go to compassion.ca slash the bridge markham and that'll be up for about another month let's get as many uh children sponsored as we can um yeah just so that they can know the love of jesus through your generosity and we want to thank you for what you do in uh, being such a generous church. These are the opportunities that we get to do. Uh, children get to be sponsored. Missionaries get to be sponsored. We get to go out into our community and into our world. And we're going to hear more about um, that today. Uh, we're talking about Giving Sunday. But we just want to give you an t- uh, opportunity to give. All of our giving right now is online. Uh, so you can do that through um, going to the bridgemarkham.com com slash give and you can see all the giving opportunities in that way and if you want to know more you can also head to our connection center and they'll explain how to give today fantastic i'm gonna invite jay jay to the stage he is our our board our chair of the nomination committee here at the bridge and he's going to give us a little bit of an update uh, as we move into our next agm meeting why don't you come on center stage jay Thank you, Pastor Jeff, and thank you, Pastor Emily, for leading us through the Bridge Lifetime. And good afternoon, everyone. It is so good to be back together to worship our awesome God. 
If you feel, yes, I'm excited, could, uh, could you give a round of applause and say thank Ooh. you? I think uh, these are incremental steps that we can take to come to a place of uh, health, of well-being, uh, as we are all no, growing up uh, in this uh, COVID-19. And yesterday morning, I'm so thankful to the building committee who gave us the crack team to meet at the construction site of 54, 40, 16 Avenue. Okay. Dear friends, okay. I cannot express in words the swelling of gratitude and thankfulness that I had for God when I stood at 54, 40, 16 Avenue. I think Neil is there. Risa is here, Kevin will be here, and a few others here, just reflecting on God's goodness, God's provision, and God's grace as to how far he has brought us to see the new ministry space that is being built for our children's ministry. The new ministry space that is there for us to meet, mingle, and share with each other. We are going to be having 300 more new neighbors. So friends, the harvest is plenty. The workers are few. So I want to encourage you to pray for the building committee, the workers, the contractors. We met with the site supervisor who took us on a walk and telling us stories uh, of how this place is being built. So please do pray for the workers. So, uh, thank you very much for the building committee and for all who are taking on such a big responsibility. So give, could we give a round of applause and thanks to the building committee and the team as well. Thank you so much. All right. So I'm here on behalf of the board nomination committee to, to draw your attention that the annual business meeting is going to take place on Monday, November 22nd at 7 p.m. Due to COVID restrictions, it's going to be held virtually and more information will be passed on to you as we draw closer to that date. And we are so thankful to God that he has placed us in the heart of Markham to fulfill God's mission in a purposeful way. We would like to encourage all members to be present at the meeting and uphold church matters in your prayers. Now to the, the board nomination process. This year, we had two board positions that became open. The nomination committee invited for nominations in August, and we received a total of 12 nominations. And we would like to thank all those who nominated members for the board positions and for upholding the process in your prayers. Out of all the nominations, uh, five were deemed qualified. The nomination committee determined a process to journey with the five nominees uh, collaboratively to determine whether they felt God's calling, whether they had the capacity to, to serve as a board member. Out of the five, three declined and two felt led to allow their names to stand. And they are Bill Buck and uh, Ken Moe. I think, uh, sorry, if you go back to the previous slide, um, one, the one before. Let me draw attention to, first of all, uh, I want to draw your attention to the screen here. The, the two members who finished their terms are Kevin Aid has finished his six-year term, which means he's not eligible for re-election. Bill Buck completed a, a three-year term, so he is eligible for re-election. So we want to thank them for serving the board so diligently. So if you go to the next slide. So we have, uh, we are presenting the nomination committee that we have vetted these two nominations and we are presenting there are only two positions open and you will have an opportunity to vote and affirm and accept them. So thank you again for your fervent prayers uh, in the matters of our church. Uh, God bless you all and your families as you step into this new fall and rather cold winter I'm told but God is an awesome God who will get us through. Thank you, and God bless you all. Hey, everyone. My name is Sam. If you are new to the bridge or if you have been attending for some time but have 
not had a chance to hear about how the church operates, our spiritual growth pathway here at the bridge is through what we call the four G's. We gather for the renewed and inspired perspective. We group to put this inspired life into everyday practice. We give in order to sponsor and produce growth and development. And we go out into our worlds to perpetuate all the goodness of God. Now, I'm excited to have Neil and Chase here, who not only are on the board at this church, but have been living and breathing what it means to live our give G in their lives, in their families, and here at the bridge. Hey Chase, I, I just want to uh, chat with you because I know that you are the chair of the finance committee here at the bridge. And I, I want to ask, when you look at the bridge and you look at the idea of giving, what is your vision? What is your prayer for our congregation? Well, the first thing I, I have to say about that is, right now, as I look about it, we, we really do have a congregation that does give to the mission and vision of the church. Our church is appro approaching a budget or general fund giving of about $2 million. So we're somewhere in that 1.7, 1.8 million range. And if you think about that, there's, we, we try and really put most of that or nearly all of it into ministry here at the church. So three easy numbers to remember, 55, 25, and 10. 55% of all of the funds here at the church go towards our pastors and towards the ministry of what they are doing and working towards. And then 25% is the enablement. So we've hired the pastors and now they have ideas that they want to bring about. They want to help their volunteers to be encouraged. So that's the enablement part. And the 10% is our facilities. So if you add that all up, 90% of what comes in here at the church goes straight into ministry or the enablement or the infrastructure to support ministry. And what we aspire to do is really to keep that 10% that or what is the non-ministry part as low as we can get it so that we can get as much as possible into, into our community. As a finance committee, we just came through our summer period where we look at the budget for the coming year. And if I'm being honest, every year, there's two emotions that I feel as we go through this process. One is a wonderment and amazement at what God has provided and enabled us to do in the prior year and what we're going to be doing going forward. But then there's also this bit of a lament. And the lament comes about because while we can see generosity in the giving, the shape of the giving, it really appears to me and it appears to us as a board over the last decade that we've had this sort of 80-20 balance between the givers in our church. And what I mean by that is about 80% of the ministry is funded about by about 20% of the givers. Yeah, so, so that's one of the things that causes a bit of lament in my heart. And, and, and I believe that as we can raise the dial on this concept of obedience, that hopefully we can get more people coming on board to support that 20%. Yeah, I would love to see what that obedience looks like in our community as a whole. Mm -hmm. That'd be a great picture, actually. Neil, uh, I believe we have some costumes for our next, next period of time. Let's enter our bat cave. <laughs> Hey, um, I just want to hear from you. Um, I know that you and Kevin have been working really hard as you lead the uh, building. And uh, can you just share a little bit about what the $1.5 million looks like and, and why we are raising this money again? Yeah, absolutely, Sam. So our goal through our Building Hope Capital Campaign is to raise $1.5 million because that is the gap between the finances we currently have set aside to pay for the completion of our building project and what the building is going to cost. And we believe strongly that raising this money through our Building Hope campaign is important because we want to direct all of our operational resources towards doing ministry. And if we raise that $1.5 million, then we don't have to also redirect operating cost to fulfilling a loan. We get to plow everything into full ministry within a brand new building and a brand new space. 
Hey, so Neil, can you just tell us where we're at with the building campaign and uh, what can it look like for our congregation to still jump on board with what's going on? Absolutely. We have a gap. Our goal, 1.5 million. What do we have in hand? Just over 300,000. So there's about a $1.2 million gap that we still want to bridge. And that's the, the challenge that goes out to the entire congregation. All of us doing our best. That's what it's going to take to raise that $1.2 million. That fully finances and pays for the building, which then allows all of the funds that we generate after we move into the new building to go directly into ministry. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, Chase. Hey, um, I love how you guys have shared about how you have invested in your children and teaching them about obedience with their money and what that looks like in the everyday. And I think about this church building and how this church building isn't just for us, but it's for the kids of tomorrow and the opportunity of what God wants to do with Markham 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Um, so thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here with me and, and talking about what it looks like to give here at the bridge. This thing looks heavier than it looks. I don't know if you guys know that, but all right, let me see here. Hey, uh, it's good to see everyone. My name is Sam, and uh, I get a chance to share with you this afternoon. Um, didn't uh, Chase and, and uh, Neil do such a great job? Can we give them a round of applause there? They, they were awesome. Hey, just a, a quick thing that I want to share with you guys. If you didn't know, uh, our children's pastor, Pastor Shauna, she actually got married this past Friday, uh, which is very exciting. Her and her husband, Brandon, are newlyweds. So the next time, I think they're on their honeymoon right now, but next time you see her, make sure to give her a brain hug in her words, all right, and, and to encourage her and just, uh, and just bless her. Um, I had some moments a couple weeks ago not realizing how big of a pandemic made, uh, the impacts made on my life coming into service and just being able to worship uh, so freely that how much of a gift this is, a gift to be able to worship collaboratively and together like this. And uh, I just love that we get to worship uh, collectively. And so I, I just wanted to thank you for giving me this opportunity to share with you guys today. If you guys don't know, we've been uh, going through our pathway at the bridge and, and how we accomplish our mission and vision, which is through the four G's. Pastor Brian, in the past three weeks, has shared about gathering, about grouping, and going. And today and next week, Pastor Emily and I will be sharing about our fourth G, which is the give, the give. Um, before we do that, can I pray with you? Can I do that? Thank you. I needed that nod. Thank you. I want to pray with you. Um, thank you, God, for this opportunity that we have a chance to uh, glorify you and honor you in this moment. Thank you for the gift that we have to worship collectively like this. Thank you that um, out of all your goodness that you would give Jesus and Lord, as we look into this idea of giving back to you what you have already given, Father, we pray that you would open up hearts and minds to all that you have in store. Thank you, Lord, uh, in Jesus' name, amen. A couple weeks, a couple months ago now, I guess, I was in a class called Rhythms of Healthy Leadership. Rhythms of Healthy Leadership. It was an eight-hour class for five days and uh, every day for a week, and in one section of that class, we looked at what it looks like to have a childlike heart, which is very different from being childish, okay? There's a difference between childish and having a childlike heart. A childlike heart is a child that's innocent, is observant, is open to new ideas, so if you have small children, you would know what it looks like when a, a childlike heart comes about. You'll be going walking along, and they'll see worms on the ground, be like, oh my goodness, worms, right? And, and they'll see the leaves changing color, and they'll ask questions, why the leaves changing color? Well, how come they don't stay green? And, and they'll observe lice in people's hair. The Chungs had lice once upon a time, and we observed lice and what it looked like to deal with lice, and, and to have a childlike heart is to have this observance and innocence in 
life. And so I've learned a lot from my children. I learned a lot. Patience is a big one, but I've learned a lot. One of the things I've learned about uh, is this idea of what it looks like to have a childlike heart when it comes to giving. Recently, my kids got a paper route, and so we've been teaching them on how these ideas of giving and saving and um, spending. So we have these three kind of categories, and, and so I, I sat down with my son Luke, and I said, why did you, why did you give to these three things? He, he gave to the Out of the Cold Project back in the day, he gave to Lois's birthday present, and he gave to the building project, right? So I said, why, why did you give to those three things? And he said, okay, well, you know, for Out of the Cold, I know that we live in a house, and so, you know, and, and, and these people don't. And they need a place to live, so what little I got, I want to give to that. To the building project, mommy said I had to. <laughs> right? And, uh, and she didn't just say a portion of it. She said, you give your whole paycheck. And, and I was like, well, the whole paycheck? And he was like, yeah, you know, mommy said that when she first got a job, she would give her whole paycheck to God. And so I wanted to do the same. And so I said, okay. And I said, well, why did you give to Lois? And he's like, that was an easy one. I love Lois. Of course I'm going to give to Lois. I love that. I love Lois. Um, I, I find that having this childlike heart when giving is so much easier when you're a kid, isn't it? And then all of a sudden you grow up, and there's expenses, and there's debt, and there's all these things that start coming up, and all of a sudden, giving becomes a little bit more difficult. I'm going to say this. When it comes to giving, giving is a matter of the heart. Giving is a matter of the heart. Pastor Brian talks about three T's when it comes to giving. Your time, your talents, and your treasure. Your time, talents, and treasure. Oftentimes when we see your time, your talents, and your treasure, you ask, what is the condition of your heart when it comes to your time, talents, and treasure? So an easy way to access what's a part of our heart is to take record. Take record of your time, talents, and treasure. So for example, number one, take record of what you do with your time. Take record of what you do with your time. So a part of my class, Healthy Rhythms of Leadership, one of the things we have to do is sit down and say, what did you do all week? And assess, what is it that you treasure with your time? If you look at my schedule, a lot of it's filled with my young adults. Love my young adults. They're awesome. And my family, my school, and then stuff around the house. It takes up a lot of my time. You take record of the things that you're spending your talents on. And, and, and this might be a little bit harder, uh, but what you'll find is that, you know, for myself, like preaching and teaching isn't a big talent of mine, but I enjoy doing it. But there's other areas that I recently found out that I really enjoy doing, and it's, it's, I just love spending time with people, with my young adults. And, and I found out that's called shepherding, right? It's something that I enjoy doing. And that's one of my, believe it or not, talents. And then three, when it comes to your treasure, if you look into your bank account, your credit card statements, you can find where your money goes. You can find where your money goes. Esther and I, my wife, we do an assessment of our money every three months. Every three months we say, okay, where's our money going? Because we need to know where our money goes. And one of the things that we always have on the top of our lines, so we have, you know, this is what's coming in, and on the very first line is our tithes. And, and Esther will say, hey, you know, it's going to be tight this, this month, but this doesn't ever change. This will never change. So I said, well, what do we do? And she says, well, we got to cut back. We either we're not going to go out as much. It means that we're not going to buy those beef sticks that you really like to eat, right? It means that we got to cut back in other areas. But it shows the condition of her heart, doesn't it? When ties never change. It shows the condition of her heart that ties will never change. When it comes to generosity, it's a matter of the heart. And I'm excited that Pastor Brian would ask me to share on this topic um, with you all. I hope that this perspective of giving shows you why this, uh, as we share, it shows you why this is a pathway at the bridge. Because it's important. We believe that this is important for all of us. For all of us. All right. 
So I want to share with you a, a passage. It comes from Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 24. It comes from the Sermon on the Mount, which is probably the greatest sermon ever preached by Jesus. And he shares this in verse 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasure in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body would be full of darkness. If, you're, if then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. And then he says, you cannot serve both God and money. Jesus says, do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth. If you look at the Greek, the Greek would actually say, do not treasure up treasures on earth. Do not treasure up treasures on earth. Uh, and what they're really trying to say is this. Look into your life and ask the question, what are the treasures in your life that you are trying to hoard? What are the treasures in your life that you're trying to hoard just for yourself? And in other words, this can also be looked at as a type of greed. What are some areas that we are choosing to be greedy? that we are choosing to be greedy. Now, some of you guys may say, Sam, I ain't greedy. I ain't greedy, and then I wrote this sermon. I said I wasn't greedy, I'm, and now as I was writing this, I got convicted. So I want to just share some perspectives on how greed can hide. Okay, can I do that? How greed can hide. There's a pastor named Helen Sa. He gives four perspectives. Number one, greed can hide a lot easier than any other sin. Let me say that again. Greed can hide easier than any other sin, and it's hard to detect. And this is why. Some people say, well, I'm giving my 10%. People say, well, I am serving, right? I am giving my 10%, I'm serving. That must be enough. People see it, and that must be enough. And this is what it says in Mark chapter 12, verse 41. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. Rich people, they're coming along and throwing in large amounts of money. Why did they do that? Do you think it was because they honestly, earnestly want to give to God or is it because, oh, bro, check this out, see how much money I'm giving. How much you giving? Oh, I'm sorry, two copper coins, right? Check this bag of gold. He says, the rich man, how did we even know that he's giving this much? Well, everybody can see it. But does that mean that the heart was there, right? Because where a heart is, where a heart is, he might have been doing this so that people would see. He might have said, well, I got to give this, but if I had a choice, I wouldn't. If I had a choice, I wouldn't. Usually when you think of greedy people, you don't think of yourself. Why is that? Halam Sa says this, because greed is not, the, not like any other sin, because it has a unique ability to be able to hide and remain undetected in our hearts. It's not like lying or stealing or killing, where automatically you see the repercussions of it. Right? When you lie, you steal, you kill somebody, you, you see that dead body. But when it comes to greed, greed can hide. Greed can hide. It's different. Can't be tied down. It's hard to detect, too. Greed also hides itself by letting you off the hook. It lets you off the hook. It hides when you see someone else spending more money than you do. And then you're like, see, I could spend this money. Look how much they're spending. Or if someone else has a great looking phone, it gives you a justification to upgrade your phone. Well, they got one, so why can't I? Why can't I? And here's the thing. Many sins are exposed in community. But greed can hide. Many sins can be exposed in community. But greed can hide. Three, 
Greed can be found in spenders and savers. Greed can be found in spend, spenders and savers. Just because someone is spending a lot of money doesn't make them greedy and me not because I'm saving. If I'm hoarding my money, I'm being greedy in another way. Greedy can, greed can hide in spenders and savers. Two different actions, but similar hearts. Two different actions, similar hearts. Number four, greed gives only to places where you want to give and gives excuses for areas where they don't want to give. Let me say that again. Greed only gives to places where you want to give, gives excuses for areas where they don't want to give. There might be people that say, well, I'm going to give to this guy because he's my friend, but they would never have sponsored anybody else when it comes to missions. Greed says, well, there's this really pretty girl serving. I guess I'll serve too. You know, how am I also just going to recognize I'm around? You know why it might be hard to give to the church? Maybe we have been hurt by the church in the past. Maybe you heard something and you didn't agree with what was said and you're like, I ain't giving to that. Maybe you just don't like that handsome young adult pastor because he doesn't like Korean drama. It's like, come on man, Squid Games, right? And you, some of this, like, I might be joking, and, but I, I've heard it all. I've heard things like, I'm not giving, that church too big. I'm not giving because I don't agree with, you know, that last thing that person said. Greed gives only to places where they want to give and gives excuses for areas where they don't want to give. So how do we detect something that hides so well? How do we detect something that hides so well? In verse uh, 24 of our, of our passage, it says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And here's, here's the scary part. You ready? He says, you cannot serve both God and money. He doesn't say both God and Satan. He says God and money, as if money has more power than the evil one does. Think about that. You cannot serve both God and money. He says, money has that much power in our lives. Think about how much time we spend thinking about money, looking at the stocks, looking at our bank accounts. How much time do we spend thinking about money? And he says, you cannot serve both God and Money, it has that much power in our lives. Jesus says in Matthew 19, verse 16, he encounters a man who asks, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Jesus responds with this, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions, give to the poor, and you will treasure, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Think about this. He had done everything right, and he was wealthy. That was one thing that he wasn't willing to give up. So he chose to walk away from Jesus and follow money instead of following Christ. He did everything else but decided to follow money. So what is, how do we detect greed when it hides so well? How do we detect it? Okay, how do we detect something that, you know, it it's, it's hides in our community, it hides in our heart, how do we detect it? The light that exposes the darkness in our hearts is Christ-like generosity. It's not just generosity, it's Christ-like generosity. Christ-like generosity. Christ-like generosity is like the kryptonite to greed. Christ-like generosity is the litmus test that God gives us to help us detect the difficulty that it is uh, to detect in greed. So what does that look like? Again, my, my brother Hallam saw, he gives four perspectives on Christ-like generosity. 
okay, Christ-like generosity. Number one, everything that we own, our time, our talents, our treasures, they all came from God. They all came from God. And some of you guys might be saying, whoa, 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 Sam, Sam, check it out. I, I remember going to school, working hard. I studied. I got that job. That interview was difficult. I, I'm the reason why I'm raising, got this much money. And, and my response to you would be, who gave you your brain? Who gave you the ability to work? Who gave you the ability to be creative? Who gave you the ability to use your arms and your legs to breathe that air? Where'd that air come from? It came from God. Genesis 1 verse 1 says this, in the beginning God created, God created everything. Everything. You, me, our abilities, our brains, it all came from God. We can't say that I worked hard enough because it's always been God. It's always been God. Two, tithing is an Old Testament command that comes from passages like Leviticus 27, verse 30, and Proverbs 3, verse 9, where God would give to his people in the Old Testament, and the command was to give a tenth of everything back to God. And, and some of you guys might say, well, Sam, what's the point of that? Why wouldn't God just give you 90%, right? Like, God just, it'd be easier if you, if you gave me 90 and you kept the 10. Why would he give you the 100 and then ask for the 10 back? That doesn't make sense. This is why. The reason is, so we would always remember, always remember where our time our talents, and our treasures came from. We will always remember where our time, our talents, and our treasure came from. Where it came from. And here's the thing. God wants to be generous in our lives. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that God wants to be generous in our lives. It says this in Malachi 3, verse 8 to 10. It says, will, I, will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, here are you, how are you robbing me in tithes and offerings? You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, and there will be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. Test me, he says, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. And what God tells the people in this verse, in a loving but stern way, when you don't tithe, you rob me. You're not bringing to me what belongs to me. You are not believing that everything you have is because of me. Now, here's the thing. God doesn't want to withhold things from us. I believe that. Now, being a parent, when I see my kids fighting over something, what does a parent do? Take it away. <laughs> you take it away. Right? You take it away. And... and what I've realized is that as much, as hard as you might work, something so small like this can happen. My wife was a physiotherapist. Um, she needs her hands. She broke her arm. And just like that, six months she was out of work. Six months, just like that, it could be taken away. But I also believe that God is generous. He's a generous God. The other day, uh, during the summertime, I don't know if you guys know, Esther and I, we love ice cream. We love ice cream. You should eat ice cream. We, <laughs> I love ice cream. We're down, yeah, thank you. Um, we're down in, in Unionville Main Street, and we're walking along with our kids. My kids, they have an ailment. Luke's lactose intolerant. My daughter has some skin ailments. So they haven't been eating dairy for almost their whole life, okay? They know how much we love ice cream. I, I, we're walking down. If you ever been down Mar like Unionville Main Street, it's like ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, bubble tea, ice cream, right? And, and you just walk along. And I'll turn and I'll look ice cream store. I'll look at Esther and, and she'll do this. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. 
And our kids will look up and, and say to us, Mommy, I know how much you love ice cream. I got this paper route. I want to buy you ice cream. And I turned to Luke and I said, what about me? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, in that moment, I just remember, like, when they said that to us, I was like, let's buy all the ice cream. I don't care if you can't eat it or not. Let's just eat it all together. Like, how much more generous do we want to be when our kids are looking to be generous? Do you not think that our God who says, I love you, wants to be that much generous with us? Am I wrong on that? Don't you think that a generous God would want to be even more generous with us? 100%. God doesn't want to withhold something from us. He wants something for us. Three, the Old Testament way of giving actually doesn't really apply to us. The Old Testament way of giving was this. Obey God, give and then you will be blessed. Obey God, give, you will be blessed. That's their principle. This is old school. Four, the New Testament principle does apply to us. The New Testament principle does apply to us. It says this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ. It says this, who has blessed us? We have already been blessed. And you're thinking, we have? We have already been blessed. And then in the Old Testament, it's, you know, we obey God, give, and then you'll be blessed. But we have been blessed already. God says, I'm going to give you my son. I'm not going to withhold anything and give you everything up front. I'm not going to withhold anything and give you everything up front. He would send Jesus to die on the cross for us. He would turn his face away so that we would have the gift of life. We would have the gift of life. He says, I'm pouring out every spiritual blessing because you are my child and I am your father and I want to give you everything. That is the gospel, isn't it? That Jesus would die for us so that we may live. So in light of the gospel, the question is not how much are we willing to give, but how much are we willing to withhold? Let me say that again. In light of the gospel, when God has given us everything, what are we willing to withhold? He didn't give us 10% of his blood. He didn't give us 10% of his body when he died. He gave us everything. So in light of that, how much are we willing to withhold? If you are a follower of Jesus, this should just destroy your greed. It should just destroy your greed. You know what the average Canadian tithes Average Canadian churchgoer ties 2.43% of their salary. 20% of the average church member, not churchgoer, let me make that clear, because some of you guys are here that are new, that have never been to church, I'm talking about churchgoer, that are uh, talking about church member, who have been a member of a church. 20% give nothing at all. What kind of gospel are we preaching when we give 2.43%. What do you think people see in a gospel when we give nothing at all? I'm not telling this to you to, to guilt trip you. I'm telling you this so that we can understand if God has given us everything in light of that, what do we dare withhold? So some of you guys may think, okay, what do I give? All right, Old Testament 10%, I've been given 10%. What do I give? I think the question is different. Helam Tsa, he says, the heart of greed asks, how much do I have to give? But the heart of Christ-like generosity says, how much do I get to give in light of what Jesus has done for me? How much do I get to give in light 
of everything that God has given to me. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now because this is countercultural. It's difficult. And it's going to make you look at money differently. Side note, why should we give to the church? Is it okay to give to another organization like Compassion? And, and those things are great. But why do we give to the church? John Piper says this, I think the local church has a unique and special place in God's plan and therefore special claim on the giving of its people. Other kinds of ministries are wonderful and I want them all to flourish. But the one institution in the world that is clearly rooted in the New Testament and in the gospel is the local church. If that institution fails, all other ministries become ineffective. If that institution fails, all other ministries become ineffective. Indeed, if the church fails, all other ministries become unbiblical. The local church is a seedbed for all other ministries. The church is a place where the participants in this, those ministries find their nourishment and the biblical expression of their corporate worship. So what I'm saying, and what John Piper's trying to say is, if you are invested here, if this is a place that you call home, think about what the bridge would look like if there was no bridge. Think about what church would look like if no one ever gave to the church. All right, so what do we do? I'm not asking you guys to go out and spend all your money at the debit machine outside. That's not what I'm looking for. This is what I'm gonna ask you to do. Get together with your life group. Get together with your families. Get together with your accountability, people you're accountable with, and pray. And pray. Pray knowing that in, in knowing that in light of all that God has done, God, what are you convicting me of now to give? This is what Esther and I do before every time we uh, need to give, we pray. We sit down, we pray together and say, hey, how much are we gonna give? How much are we gonna give to the building project? How, we, how much are we gonna give to this, to this missionary? How much are we gonna give? We sit down and we pray. So I encourage you, sit down with your life group, sit down with those who are accountable, sit down with your families and pray. And I think that will be a beginning of what it can look like to give. Now, I just wanna share this from Michael Wilkins. He says this. He's a theologian who has shared that in Scripture, money, wealth, and possessions have three primary purposes. Number one, to give appropriate care for one's own family and prevent them from becoming a burden to others. Number two, to help those who are in need, especially a family of faith. Number three, to encourage and support God's work in spreading the gospel of the kingdom both at home and around the world. If we have put Jesus at the center of our life, or even if you haven't and you want to crush your greed, now it's just putting Jesus at the center of your heart. If we have Jesus at the center of our lives to serve and love him, and we all have chosen to move in that direction, I look forward to what God's going to do when we pray for a childlike heart in giving in a Christ-like generos generosity way. Can, you, can we pray together? Let's pray. Hey God, I'm just so grateful that God in the midst of all that you have given, because you have given us a lot, in all that you have given in Christ, you would give us everything. I pray for all of us, as we look at this idea of what it looks like to give, that this isn't what you're calling us, you're not calling us to a guilt trip, you're calling us to understand what it looks like when you gave everything. Thank you for Jesus that crushes greed crushes it, something so hard to detect. 
that because of Jesus living in our lives, you call us to have a Christ-like generosity that could crush that greed. So I pray for all of us, myself too, God, because I know that I have my stuff to work through to God, that you give us that heart day in and day out. In Jesus' name, amen. of God giving so much of himself, so why do we withhold? Um, because he essentially is the greatest giver, amen. Why don't we stand together and let, it, let God come in to your heart and strip away those layers of materialism, those layers of pride and greed. Let him do his work within your heart today. Let us sing in response of his goodness. And as we sing, and as Esther leads us.
me. to him. Give him thanks for his goodness and all of his great gifts. Let's take that moment. Sing that out. Thank him. Come on. Oh, we sing high. 
church amen. amen don't these songs so just grab you doesn't our god just grab you when the church the body the collective mm -hmm. just have their eyes closed their hands raised and are just worshiping him our god is good he amen. sees each and every one of you he sees the struggles in finance the things that maybe sam preached about today he sees the struggle with relationship, maybe with loneliness, maybe with connection. He sees you. He sees where you are, and church, he reigns above it all. Amen? That's true. That's so comforting to my heart that he reigns above it all. <laughs> Jeff doesn't have to try to reign above it all. And we can just give it to him this morning, give it to him this week. What a prayer that is just for him to reign above it all, to take it. Jesus, this morning we release the thing that we're holding on to so tight. God, you know what that is. You know what that is in our lives. And I love you because of that, because you know me. You know every 
everything about me. You know the thing that I'm consistently holding on to. You know us, everyone in this room, everyone watching online. And I love that you are for us. I love that you are God who comforts us and doesn't chop us off and send us away, but he says, come close, draw close to me. Jesus, we draw close to you today. We worship you, we love you, we seek your face. We pray all this in your name. Amen. 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 Friends, why don't you guys have a seat? This morning, if uh, if you have just found this afternoon that God is is stirring in your heart, if you're if you're looking for prayer, we have an amazing team of prayer partners, and I'm not joking. They are amazing. <laughs> They're not here to fill a role. They are here to step into the gift that God has given them to pray for, to encourage, to uphold you guys in prayer. If you guys need a word of prayer this morning, a word of encouragement, uh, we encourage you guys to press into that today. We have a prayer room uh, to my left, to your right, at the back of the room. Um, might encourage you, when service is done in just a couple seconds when we start to uh, dismiss you guys, why don't you move to the front of the platform to move along just so you don't get caught up in the rush of the exit. Um, Pastor Anna and her prayer team would love to pray with you guys this morning. If you're joining with us online, there is a request prayer button that you guys can, um, you guys can push that anytime through its service. And we have hosts and pastors online uh, that are eager to pray with you. So uh, take advantage. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to register for next week's service. So every week our registration opens the Sunday at 7 p.m. for the following Sunday. So tonight at 7 p.m., you'll have the opportunity to register for next week. And same goes for, I think, Vibe and our youth as well. So, and and that, that goes like hotcakes. I know we got to set on there for 7 o'clock p.m. or my daughter's not getting in to Friday Night Vibe. The so Friday make sure nights, you guys register. Yeah. Guys, that is it for us. For the, our friends online, thank you for joining with us. This is the part that you guys don't need to hear. But for us in this space, we're just going to dismiss you guys uh, kind of in a responsible manner. So if you guys could, these two sections here, one and two, if you guys could exit out that left door, that would be fantastic. And then we're going to go these two sections, one and two. If you guys could go through the right door, which is closest Back. to the sound booth, yeah. that would be fantastic. We'll roll some worship music for those of you that are just sitting, and uh, we'll just chill for a couple minutes while we move on out. Fantastic.